Okay. Hey everyone. Um, I'm gonna be doing a uh, kind of an install slash how-to video today. Um, I'm going to put in um, I'm be putting in a couple of tie-down points in the truck today. These are uh, some D rings I've gotten, and uh, I'm gonna be putting a pair of these into the uh, bed of the truck today. Um, for uh, some tie down points in case I ever put some cargo in the box of the truck which I've done lots of already but I'm just in need of some better better tie downs the ones I have in there are not really that strong and they're a little flimsy so I figured I'd replace them and then I thought well I might as well make a video out of this um, in case anyone else wants to put some tie downs in their bed of their truck they could uh, perhaps make use out of this video um, so I'm going to uh, Bring out a tailgate, and I've got the most of the tools I'm going to need laid out here, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get started here. Okay, so basically for this job, all I'm really using is a corded drill to drill the holes for the uh, the bolts that go through the um, the brackets for the D rings. Um, I'm using a 14 millimeter uh, socket on a ratchet. Um, I believe it's a... What is this now? Half... No, this is three quarter inch? Yeah, I believe this is three... No, I'm sorry. Three eighths. Yes, three eighths. And... Let's see here. I'm also using um, black spray paint. Um, I'm using that to paint the uh, bolt holes that I drill, just to help prevent any rust. It's a rust-resistant uh, black spray paint. It dries pretty quickly. Um, I'm using a gray Sharpie to mark the uh, holes out uh, that I'm drilling. And uh, the hardware that I'm using for this are... I'm afraid I don't quite recall. I've, I've bought these quite some time ago and I've had them in the truck for quite a while before doing this installation. But I'm using, um, I'm not sure what, uh, what the thread size is on this, but I'm using carriage bolts. I'm using carriage bolts because they actually go right through the, the brackets on the D-rings. The D-rings actually have these brackets here. See how well this actually comes up. They actually have the square, the square holes in them, and the and the, the carriage bolt mounts in there flush, which is nice. So you don't have any like high rise in the bolt if you would have been using like a normal bolt and a washer, which is really nice. And then you also don't have to have a uh, open end wrench on the one end to hold the the bolt in place while you uh, do the nut up on the other side of the bed, which is nice as well. And then on the underside of the uh, the carriage bolt on the underside of the bed. I'll be using these thick pads, these thick steel pads, and what these will do is they'll help distribute the load, like when I'm tying something down or ratcheting something down in the bed of the truck. Uh, these pads on the underside of the bed will help distribute the load of the force of the ratchet on the bolt of the D-ring, and it'll help just uh, prevent any bending or, uh, or chafing on the, on the underside of the bed. And then on top of that, I'll be using a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. So yeah, I've uh, I've already done uh, this one here. If I can find it here, I've already done uh, this side here. I'll get a better picture of that in a second here. But I've already done the driver's side here, and I'm just about to start the passenger side. So I'll show you how that. Uh, it's gonna go here. Okay, so this is the D-ring that I've already put in the bed. This is just a close-up of it. So basically, um, this is just bolted right through like that. And then you can run your ratchet strap uh, to this ring here. And it's a good size D-ring. Uh, this is the other one here. These are the same D-rings I actually use on my flatbed trailer. And I have those ones welded on. But these are rated at uh, 11,000 pounds. Uh, strength that's stamped right there. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's rated at 11,000 pound uh, brake strength. 
and yeah I use these on my flatbed trailer I've used these on quite a few applications before and they work extremely well very high strength I've never had a problem with one so I figured I would use the same ones I use on my trailer on the uh, truck just because uh, I have quite a bit of experience with these uh, specific uh, D-rings for applications like this for tying loads down and stuff so uh, yeah that's the one I have loaded so far or uh, put in so far and uh, I'll go ahead and show you uh, how I'm going to do the other side here Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drill out the, uh, the marked holes I have in the bed here for the second D-ring. I'm starting out with a smaller drill bit and I'm going to work my way up to the larger drill bit just to help the, uh, the larger drill bit uh, not have to wander when it goes in. Now you could go ahead and use a center punch for these but I find that with metal like this when you're on a relatively flat surface like this and when it's just kind of thin metal like a truck box like mine it's pretty old that I don't really need to use a center punch to really get lined up right, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the drill. Before you start drilling, it's a good practice to go underneath the uh, truck bed to actually make sure that you're not going to drill into anything that you don't want to uh, drill into, like, uh, like for example, a fuel line or any uh, wiring of any kind or um, basically any, anything sort of like that, anything delicate you don't want to uh, hit with the drill bit, so that's a good practice. I've already gone ahead and I've gone underneath the truck bed and uh, inspected all of that, but... Uh, if you're going to do this, it's a good idea to go ahead and inspect um, anything on the other end of uh, your drill that you do not want to go ahead and drill into. This drill I'm using is a corded, it's a corded half inch, well half inch chuck I should say, and it's a uh, Nikita, which is a Nikita. I don't know if you can see that or not, but very, very high end drill. I believe this is a construction grade drill. Works very, very well. It's relatively new. Go ahead and change my my bit out here for the larger diameter bit. I much prefer these corded drills over the cordless drills because doing a job, like if it's a relatively large job, with a cord with a cordless drill you're constantly having to charge the batteries and it just delays the entire job and it, I much prefer just having the cordless drill and having to deal with a cord because I mean at least you get to keep your constant uh, power and you don't have to worry about the battery dying on you halfway through your job so that's always convenient. Go ahead and with the larger bit here. So I've got the holes drilled now, and I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and show you an up close of that. I'll take you off the tripod here. Okay, zoom out here. 
So, okay, these are the holes that I've drilled, and these here are just the metal shavings. I go ahead and I take a broom and I, I uh, sweep all those metal shavings out so you don't have any of those. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that right quick, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll paint these bolt holes. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've swept off the, uh, the metal shavings that, I've, uh, that were caused by the drill head, or the drill bit, I should say, um, from drilling out the uh, bolt holes. And this is the paint I'll be using. It's from Princess Auto. It's an anti-dry, or fast-dry, uh, anti-rust spray paint. It's black. Uh, works extremely well. And uh, I'm just going to paint the bolt holes just to uh, kind of uh, help uh, prevent any further rust from going inside there. My truck's old. It's quite a bit of uh, surface rusting on it now that I'm actually working on treating. But uh, yeah, I just like to spray the bolt holes just to kind of help that in that regard. And uh, I'll go ahead underneath here and we'll we'll get the bolt holes on the other side as well. So we'll climb under the truck here and find the bolt holes which are right here. Okay, help those be protected a little bit there. And I'll go ahead and show you the uh, bolts I've put on the uh, other side of the truck bed too for those other D-rings which are right there so yeah these are those pads that I was talking about uh, these pads will help um, distribute the uh, load for when you actually put some tension on those uh, D-rings when you're tying something down in the bed of your truck they'll kind of help distribute the load over a larger uh, surface area of space to kind of help uh, prevent any buckling or or bending or anything of the sort to the actual uh, metal on the truck bed. That's my uh, idea of it anyways. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side with the pads and whatnot and the washers, uh, lock washers and nuts. Okay, so we're gonna put this, uh, the bolts in this D-ring here. And we'll, uh, yeah, we'll put this side up like this. And then this little bracket deal here sits over top here. Just line that up with the holes and just take your carriage bolt, put the carriage bolt through. It'll sit nice and flush inside those uh those square square uh indents or the square holes. Let this camera focus here. Oh, sorry about that guys. Ah, oh, camera was zoomed in like all the way there. have to drill this hole out a little bit more. I'll put you guys on the tripod here. It's probably like a circus. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill that hole out a little bit bigger here and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and drilled that one hole out a little bit bigger there. There must have just been like a little burr or something in there that was preventing the bolt from going in, but it sits nice and flush now. So I'm going to go on the underside of the truck and I'll uh, I'll put the hardware in here. Got the nuts and the bolts, or the nuts and the washers, the pads. Let's go underneath here and put this hardware in. Okay, so let's see how I can do this with one hand here. Go ahead and take the pad and the washer and get all the stuff ready here. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on. You know how well I can do this with one hand here. And then 
so you're going to get that on there. And I'm just going to put the camera down here and I'm going to put that nut on here. So I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and I've put the, uh, the nuts and the washers and the pads in place. I'm just about to take the, uh, the ratchet in the socket here and to tighten these up here. So I'll go ahead and do that here. That's the reason I uh, quite like carriage bolts is they, uh, they don't require you to use an open-ended wrench on the other end on the bolt head because they sit nice and carriage bolts sit nice and they're designed to sit flush in that square uh, hole inside of uh, the D-rings. So you can just go right ahead and just take a ratchet and socket and just tighten them up on the one end and you're set. These don't have to be King Kong tight, but they're tight enough for the application that I'm going to be using them for. And, uh, and yeah, let's go take a look on the other side and see what they look like. Okay, so there's the uh, D-ring we just finished putting in. These should work really good for tying anything down in the box of the truck that I may need. I had these ones on here before and they're just too flimsy. They're just little things on there with screws and that and I wanted something a lot bigger and stronger so with actual bolts and nuts so that should work just fine. So uh, so yeah, um, just a quick kind of um, video today I think. Um, uh, it's my first kind of how-to sort of video, but uh, but uh, I hope it uh, was helpful to some of you. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, stay tuned on my Sir Kinder channel for anything more truck and trailer uh, and hauling related. Um, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for more videos with the truck and my trailer and hauling and anything else that may come down the road here. So uh, if you haven't already, um, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and uh, follow me on Instagram. And uh, yeah, just to stay up to date with uh, what's going on here. All right, I hope the video was informative to some of you and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. All right, thanks guys.